Morning, Mr. Kiley. I yield to the chair. Uh, uh, Mr. Kiley, the I chair of my the time. Judiciary Committee. Oh, to the chair of the Judiciary Committee. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Kiley. Thank the gentleman for uh, yielding. Uh, Ms. Uh, Ms. Clark, who's Ava Edel? Um, Chairman, that, that is not a name that I'm familiar with. Well, I'll, I'll try to familiarize you with her. She is an 87-year-old pro-life advocate who survived a communist concentration camp in Yugoslavia after World War II that you guys have charged under the FACE Act for praying and singing in front of an abortion clinic. Is that the best use of the Justice Department's time and energy? Um, as noted, the FACE Act has been uh, is a law that this body passed in response to efforts to obstruct access to uh, reproductive health clinics, threats of violence, acts of violence. We follow the facts and, uh, and apply the law without fear or, or favor, Chairman. Really? I think we've heard a lot of that today about how if you're pro-life, you get, you get the full treatment. Just ask Ava Edel, 87-year-old concentration camp survivor. But if you're on the other side, after the Dobbs decision, oh, it's a different, different, uh, different issue, uh, in spite of what you've said, that you apply it equally across, uh, across the board. Um, how about um, your decision to file a lawsuit against SpaceX? Can you talk to me about that? Uh, yes, uh, Chairman. Let me ask it this way first. Did Elon Musk's purchase of Twitter have anything to do with the Justice Department's decision to file that lawsuit against SpaceX? The uh, investigation into SpaceX was open during the last administration, and we filed an administrative action under the Immigration and Nationality Act. And Important law passed by this body with bipartisan support and signed into law by President Reagan. So what, what are you alleging that, that SpaceX did wrong? Uh, in this case, we allege that the company is not compliant with the anti-discrimination provisions of the Immigration and Nationality Act. This is a law that has been- What are they discriminating uh, against? Uh, here they are discriminating against um, people who have received refugee and asylum status by our federal courts under the so INA. Refugee, they're discriminating against refugees and asylum seekers, oh, is that no, right? Uh, uh, no, Chairman, uh, against people who have received refugee status and asylum status by our federal courts and who enjoy equal standing under federal law uh, to U.S. citizens and, and naturalized citizens. The law requires equal treatment of these individuals. It and is you're saying that SpaceX did not hire, is that, is that appropriate, did not hire enough refugees or uh, people who've been granted asylum? Uh, they, is that what you're asserting in the lawsuit? Uh, they, and that they discourage those people from applying for any job, whether it's for a, a custodial uh, position, a mm -hmm. office clerk, uh, someone who works in a kitchen facility, all the way up through engineering. So you're suing, you're, I just want to cut to the chase, you're suing SpaceX because they hired too many Americans, too many citizens, um, this, not enough people who are refugees or people who've been granted asylum. This investigation And you waited to sue, this investigation started three years ago, I know the facts, last it started three years ago, and yet you bring the lawsuit after Mr. Musk purchases Twitter, now X, is that right? Uh, we apply the laws that this body gave us without fear or favor. And, and, and Mr. Uh, Musk, his assertion is that they're dealing with national security type information at SpaceX, and that's why he's even posted this before you brought the lawsuit. He said this, that's why they focus on hiring people who have a green card or are American citizens. And you guys say, this is something we, we need to go after. SpaceX, because they're not hiring enough Americans, and we need to charge Ava Edel, 87-year-old concentration camp survivor. That's what the Justice Department and the Biden administration needs to do. But oh, by the way, we don't know anything about Missouri v. Biden. We didn't weigh in on the issue where a governor of a state told the citizens, they're American citizens, you cannot exercise your Second Amendment rights contrary to the law, contrary to what the Supreme Court has said, and you're trying to tell us today that the Civil Rights Division of the Justice Department is not political. Frankly, I, I find it almost laughable that you're making that argument because anyone 
with common sense and any objectivity can see, you guys are definitely political. With that I yield back and thank the gentleman who's left for yielding time. Well, I thank the uh, Judiciary Committee Chairman. Um, I would like to uh, uh, ask unanimous consent to insert into the record a letter uh, from a uh, Mr. Paul Teller, the Executive Director of Advancing American Freedom, to Attorney General Garland, Secretary Cardona, uh, that is noting the significant spike in uh, anti-Semitic vandalism, harassment, and violence across the United States, uh, and asking the Department of Justice, Department of Education, who have expansive jurisdiction, particularly Civil Rights Division, uh, over these matters to uh, ensure that they're uh, you know, following up on that is signed by numerous groups across the country without objection.